Hi everyone, we're going to take a look today at how to set up your Haas Classic controller via RS-232 to get out a results file when probing. We're going to use the same function as the next generation control called dprint. If you are wondering what controller do you have, there's an easy way to find out. Let's use the current commands key and then keep pressing page up until you circle around to the macro variables tab. You can see here that the global variables start at 100. If you have a next generation control, these start at 10,100. Now you know that you definitely have a classic control, we need to wire up your RS-232 cable. You can either solder your own cable, but my preferred method is to use these network adapters that you just have to push the desired pins into the correct location. So you're going to need one female 9 pin network adapter, one male 25 pin network adapter, an ethernet cable, and if your computer is from this century, then you'll most likely need an RS-232 to USB adapter. And finally, a pair of snips. We're going to need to wire up our 9 pin connector first. As this is a female connector, remember the top right is our pin 1. The colours don't matter here if your adapters have different colours as long as you choose matching colours for the two adapters. So the wiring sequence is white to pin 2, red to pin 3, green to pin 4, black to pin 5, blue to pin 6, yellow to pin 7, and orange to pin 8. I have a brown cable left over here, so I'm just going to chop that off clean to make sure it doesn't short against anything, and then clip the connector together. Now for the 25 pin connector. As this is a male connector, pin 1 is in the top left. Again, the sequence for this one is white to pin 2, red to pin 3, orange to pin 4, yellow to pin 5, green to pin 6, black to pin 7, and blue to pin 20. As before, you can cut off the remaining pin and clip the connector together. So we now have our two cable ends. They both plug into the ethernet cable and our 25 pin connector goes to our control and the 9 pin either goes directly into your PC or via a USB converter. Haas recommend using PuTTY as the terminal to receive the data from your controller. You can download this from any web browser. After plugging in the cable to our PC and controller, we need to find what port we are using. Navigate to your device manager and expand the ports and look for your connection. We can see here that we are using port 5. Now we need to see what our network settings are on our controller. Press the settings button and then page up all the way to the IO tab and then to the RS-232 ports page. We are now going to use these parameters to fill in the correct settings in PuTTY. Change the connection to serial and put in your correct port number. And the board rate from the control is the speed. Now navigate to the serial tab and fill in the data bits, stop bits, parity and flow control is the synchronization. Finally, we need to set up where the data log will get saved to. You want all session output. Select a file path and name for the log file. But be careful here as you may have problems writing to some protected networks or locations. I like to set always override so I don't have hundreds of results files after a few days of inspection. 
You can now save these settings and open the connection. For a quick test, let's type Q100 and then hit the return key. You should have your machine serial number returned. Brilliant, you have a successful connection. If not, go back over the steps again, check your wiring and pin numbers, and then double check the settings in PuTTY. Now we're going to use the CAM sample in Fusion probing strategies. I'm going to download the correct post processor from the online library and then process the first inspection surface strategy. Make sure your tool number is correct here. If you have the manufacturing extension then edit the tool number inside of Fusion otherwise just change the tool number and height offset in any text editor. Let's run this on our machine and we can see the results coming back into PuTTY in real time. We then import this log file into Fusion 360 and see the results directly on the CAD. One more thing to check is that your measure feed rate is correct. The easiest way to find this is to run any of your existing probing cycles and look for the feed rate used during the touch move. This is our measure feed rate that you put back into Fusion. In our case, here, it's 102 millimeters per minute. Remember that you need to run the probe at 100% feed to get good reliable results. You can slow this down for testing, but then just do another run at 100%. And finally, remember this is the same technique to get the print file from Probe WCS and Probe Geometry. Thanks again for watching and see you all soon.